What do you think of what's happening here with Uber in terms of the growth rate versus uh, bringing down some of the losses? Bringing down losses seems like a great idea, except if your growth rate really slows, how are investors going to think about that? Listen, you know, it's easy to have growth rates at in my level where we're going in at, you know, a million dollar valuation or 10 million or even 50. But you're getting up to the kind of revenue level they have to grow 24 percent. Or, uh, is, a, is not so terrible, and you can't expect growth rates that, to keep going at 50 or 100 percent a year, although the market is enormous. I just heard it's, it's an $8 trillion market worldwide for uh, urban communications, you know, one way or the other, whether it's by, by uh, car or by train or whatever. It's a huge market. So would you buy into this IPO? No. 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 Because? Because I just, I, you know, Uber is going to sell based on excitement. I mean, the excitement is the same will happen with Lyft. The same. Will Do you feel differently about Lyft? Do you feel differently about Slack, Airbnb, any of any of the unicorns that are likely to come public in the next couple I months? I think my experience has been that when these unicorns or any of them goes public, the first thing you worry about is what's the first quarter going to be like after they go public? What's the second quarter? And if you haven't got three quarters of consistent progress, at some point you hit a hiccup and what worries me particularly about the uber and lyft and i'm not against it i think it's you know been a great exciting i wish you know let's let that start up front i wish i had been an investor uh but not that notwithstanding i think that uh you're always going to be subject to congestion pricing uh public complaints and competition there's a lot of competition around the world now in in this whole area so you know it's uh and the drivers i mean how Far can you go to put out 15,000 taxi cab drivers out of work? I mean, it's a, it's a, not out of work, but right. certainly there. Is there any IPO likely to come this year that you look at and you go, okay, I, I want, I want in on that? No, no, it's too early until you see the figures and right. you see what the growth rates are and you hear the hear the management speak. I mean, there's, it's going to. Let's put it this way: when I started Greycraft 12 years ago, seems like yesterday. The IPO market was very quiet, and we predicted in our fund that none of our companies would go public, and none have gone public, but we've sold a lot of them in private transactions. Right. I would say in 2019, I think we're, this is going to be an IPO year. I mean, we definitely have I don't seen know if you had an opportunity to hear it, but before you came on, um, in the last segment, we had a conversation about SoftBank and what seems like a brouhaha and battle going on inside SoftBank with some of their biggest investors, including Abu Dhabi and Saudi Arabia, upset about the valuations at which uh, Masasan has been making investments. How do you think that changes your landscape and, and, and the tech world? Well, I think uh, I, I can understand them. I mean, you see some of the prices, the amount. By the way, Mohammed, we're, we're, we served together in a board. I haven't seen him in a while. It's so nice to be next <laughs> so to him. So great to be here. We Alex. try to get together. <laughs> uh, so funny. Uh, uh, I've lost my own train of th thought. Uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, they are, it's like uh, a lot of the West Coast companies, they want to put in IPO, pre-IPO rounds. That's, the, that's been around for a long time. I want to get in just before the IPO. I can get a markup, uh, and I won't be locked up, perhaps, except for six months. And that's what's going on. And they're putting in lots of big money, assuming very high IPO prices, if for some reason we have the IPO market shuts down again, and that can shut down for so many reasons. Uh, something our president does, I'm sorry, Joe, uh, something our president does, something that happens in, in the economy, war someplace, Venezuela, and then all of a sudden it shuts down, and you wait till you get a hole again. And I think that that's what we're facing now in the next, uh, in this So, so Alan, period. in your prediction that we're going to see a lot of IPOs this year, yeah. should we interpret this as meaning that companies are rushing for some reason, or is just the natural evolution, and that's what we should expect, and there's no, no, nothing no. more general here? No, I think it's actually an interesting reflection of what's happened in the last five or ten years, that companies couldn't go public as fast. I mean, I can remember the days when you had a million or two million in revenues, literally. Uh, Intel went public at a $25 million valuation, raising $10 million. So wow. think about that, what the world was like. And today, I mean, you've got Uber in the multiple billions right. of dollars. And, and I can understand. I mean, you're, if you're a pre-IPO investor, uh, you're counting on holding it for a certain period of right. time to make a rate of return. If you're wrong, you sit there and have a long-term ownership. Right.